everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned into the NFL on EA Sports. All right, Larry, thanks. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Mass. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one between the New York Giants and the New England Patriots. They played two of the more memorable Super Bowls in recent history. The Giants and Patriots are underway again. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the inline. They go play action here on first down. And brought in by Jarrell Adams. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Almost not fair. The big guy running the corner route, being able to lean and push and get to where he wants. So how do you stop it? A lot of times you want to have a linebacker on him, a bigger body guy who can handle him physically. But a lot of times that doesn't work as well because his quickness often wins the route. down as Manning. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Manning will try again on second down. And now the ball comes out. Manning lost it. And his guys will take over at the 25-yard line. And without a doubt, not the way they pictured that opening drive unfolding. No, they were making progress. They weren't exactly in high gear. But they, they were making a few yards along the way. And now that they've coughed it up, you got to go back to the sidelines and regroup a little bit. And a great spot to start this drive from here. Blunt, the lone running back. And he'll get it up the middle. And he'll get a couple here down to the 22. And look, Garrett Blunt just does not go down easy. You know, from my experience as a defensive back, this was a difficult guy to try and tackle because of the force that he runs with and He's not going to be daunted, no matter if it's the first quarter or the fourth quarter, Brandon. Well, what shocks me about last year, 18 touchdowns. I mean, the yards were pretty good, 1161. But when I think in New England, I don't... He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Landon Collins. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. So holding by the offense and maybe now got to shift up what you want to do on the playbook. Yeah, definitely. Change what you're doing on the playbook, but boy, the advantage shifts to the guys on defense, doesn't it? Longer yardage situations, they often become bolder. Brady to throw on second down. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. And he's certainly not a guy that drops that football very often. Indeed, because that's a bit of a surprise. I know he's in the middle of some traffic and people, bodies all around him, but he usually has the focus to haul that one in. And five in the secondary now for the Giants on third down. Shotgun now for Brady. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. 
so many offenses want to include their running backs into their passing offense and be able to swing the ball out or check it down to them. But sometimes those guys are just not as comfortable catching the ball as they are running it. And that is not going to get there. Oh, he missed it short. It's no good. And this will remain a scoreless game. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. And now out come the Giants. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first day of camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about, what, the second sentence of the coach's yeah. address? And those are so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. They'll send Beckham alone to the left side. Manning now on first down. To Shepard, complete over the middle. The completion good for three, and it's second down. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. On second down, here's Manning. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Jarrell Adams, the tight end, was the target. And it's third down. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move all over the place to try and find good matchups. And they had one. They were just unable to complete the pass. An extra corner on the field for New England here on third down. Yeah, another DB. Now Manning. And he dropped it. Now it was tipped. Altered the ball a little bit, but he dropped it. And now fourth down. Well, we're not playing three yards in the cloud of dust football anymore. I kind of get why those old school coaches sometimes didn't want to throw the football. Because if it's popped up in the air, it almost turns into slow motion. And both sides trying to get to the football, and you're holding your breath wondering whether it's going to go good or bad for your team. Manning indeed going for it on four. And that's complete to Lewis. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. And that's what you've got your tough little slot receiver for, isn't it? Right there, those fourth down conversions in the middle of the field. He knows that's where he has to make his living, and that's where he has to make plays to help his team. And no one is asking him to do anything more or less than do exactly what we saw there. Drops it off in the flat to Jennings. And down inside the 15 he goes. 12 yards there as they move the chains. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. Into the red zone now, Manning. And his throw is going to be incomplete. All defenders get tired of hearing about their lack of hands and why they're playing defense instead of offense. But in this situation, it was the hands that made the play. Batting the ball away on an attempted touchdown pass. Excellent job. Way to knock it down. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. They'll send Beckham alone to the left side. Manning will try again on second down. And his throw here is incomplete. 
They tried to make something happen, but that one came up incomplete and really wasn't a good-looking throw. Yeah, maybe even go as far as to call that a little ill-advised. Yeah, I would say so. I think that's the right phrase for it. Definitely ill-advised. Just wonder about his mechanics right now, you know, and that's the tough part. You do so much stuff in practice to make it repetitive, but it has to repeat under pressure, whether it's pressure from the defense or just the pressure of playing the game. So here we go now, an extra defensive back in there on third and 10. Throwing is Manning on third down. It's hauled in by Shepard. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And Gold is able to put it through. And the Giants are off now to a 3-0 lead. So in the end, they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive only yields three points. Yeah, they were able to move the football, but the defense stiffened once their backs were to the end zone, and they were able to hold them to just three. Now it's gold after splitting the uprights to kick this one away. So a very short kick here. This will be taken by one of the up here. And they're going to wind up with pretty good starting field position as they get it up past the 35. Throwing on first down is Brady. Dumps it off to Lewis. So he got his hands a little too far outside. The ref caught him through the flag. Shotgun now for Brady. And nearly picked off. Surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away, but it does get away at its second down. Now Brady throwing on second down. Looking deep downfield. A fight for the football and it's intercepted. Picked off by Landon Collins. And they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. Now they told us repeatedly earlier in the week in our meetings, we need some plays from our defense here on the road early. They got one. And don't think they were above all week long pointing out to their defense that the other defense is rated higher than them. You gonna let that happen, guys? Is that how we're going to play? And they responded to the challenge. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. Manning now on first down. Out on the right, this is Cruz. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and it's the Giants with the football here as we begin quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. They'll send Beckham alone to the left side. Manning now on first down. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. 19 yards on the pickup there. And now they'll have it first and goal. 
and they pick up a first down, and that came out of the fullback position, but as you and I both know, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a fullback playing in that spot. You know, times have changed, right? The old school fullback doesn't really exist anymore. We're not getting that same player out of college. With all the spread offenses, not very many pro style, where you actually have a true fullback, we're having to make do in the NFL and put guys in that spot who emulate it but aren't necessarily that position. Here's a nugget, Charles, on OBJ. This year he had 101 catches, now 288 for his first three years in the league. That ties him with his former LSU teammate, Jarvis Landry, for most catches for a receiver in their first three years in the NFL. And just think about it this way. LSU is known as a running back factory as well. So wide receivers coming into the league and doing the damage they're doing, absolutely incredible. But I do know this. OBJ will tease his former teammate and say, don't forget, we're tied. But I missed a few games my rookie year. If I played those games, I'd be way ahead of you. From the two-yard line yet again, let's see what they can do on third and goal. Manning looking to throw on third and two. And that is caught. He's got it for a giant touchdown. Will tie a one-yard touchdown reception. And the Giants are able to grow their lead. Sometimes those tight ends are a mismatch. They found the mismatch there. And that's exactly why you want to drop those types of plays because coverage is just going to go to the natural guys, the guys that make the big plays on the outside. But if you work your tight end into it, that's a tough one for a defense to handle. Tough. They couldn't handle it. It worked out for six. After the touchdown, it's Robbie Gold now to kick it away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Okay, partners, New England comes out here to take the field on offense. This is such an interesting story, how they've been able to do it year after year after year. Guys talk about parity in the NFL. Well, New England has kind of transcended that parity, and they've done it with guys that you don't normally think of as household names. The parts keep changing for New England. That's the amazing part on offense, all right? Offensive linemen change, receivers change, running backs change. We know the one constant is Tom Brady, and that's a huge deal for them but to be able to do it in what you call the parody times and you're exactly right everyone's supposed to be pretty equal you know England's still a top 10 offense year in and year out in 2016 they were number four and that helped that helped them with the number one ranked defense as well second down now after the pass completion they slot Gronkowski out right ready to throw on second down his throw incomplete Gronkowski, the intended target, and now it's third down. Looked like they had an opportunity for a big play across the middle, but he didn't have the concentration of the focus necessary and dropped it before he could haul it in. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. So third and seven and an extra defensive back on the field here. Definitely want to play coverage here. Throwing his Brady on third down, and he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively and then just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. They do go for it. It's Brady. And Amendola with a catch. And he takes this one just shy of midfield all the way to the 49. I guess they don't care if I agree with that. <laughs> but, boy, you have to be surprised by that, right? I, I definitely was surprised that they decided to go for it in this situation. But they must have either felt like they either had a great play call on or they're trying to show extreme confidence. Wait, 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 Throwing on first down is Brady. Trying to squeeze it into Edelman, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Landon Collins. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. And that's now the second time he's picked off a pass here in the first half alone. Again, another great read defensively. And you just see him get in the right position to make the play and get his guys the football back. Here's the giant offense now as they get ready to take over here. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. 
Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. <laughs> you love pressure. We'll I love we'll it. We'll see if they dial it up this drive. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him onto the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. It's always tough for the guys throwing the football when they think they've got a completion and the ball's almost there, and then someone sneaks a hand or two in and back to the run. To throw, it's Manning. This will be caught at about the three. And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Victor Cruz, 32 yards. And the Giants add on to their lead. As a fan, is there anything prettier than a well-executed post route? No, it's a thing of beauty, especially when it's done like that for a touchdown. Oh, uh, the throw, the catch, and how about the run after to get it to the end zone? Just a four-play drive that time, and it was finished off by a touchdown by the New York Giants. After the touchdown, it's Robbie Gold now to kick it away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Here come the Patriots again on offense, the Super Bowl champions. And, boy, they have been able to do it a lot of times, Charles, with unsung heroes, haven't they? Look at the names that led them through the playoffs. Hogan, White, Lewis, guys you just wouldn't think of. Yeah, Deion Lewis, a fifth-round pick, three touchdowns against Houston in the divisional round. Chris Hogan, undrafted. He ends up having 180 yards in receptions, including five plays of 20 yards or more against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And how about James White, a fourth-round pick out of Wisconsin? Think about who he played behind while he was at Wisconsin, and he turns out to be the unsung hero of the Super Bowl. Would have been the MVP if it wasn't for Tom Brady. And you mentioned James White at Wisconsin. He was behind who? Melvin Gordon and Monte Ball, right? That's correct. Blunt, the lone running back. On second down, here's Brady. And his throw is incomplete. Looking for his all-pro tight end, Rob Gronkowski, and it's third and short. Well, partner, so much for the mismatch. How about the guy at the second level, that big linebacker, able to run with the receiver and make a play on the football? Hey, go down, go down. Wait, 20. Brady going to try and throw on third down. Looking for Gronkowski, and he's got him complete. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Well, there it is, partner. Brady to Gronk, their first connection of the game. You think those two often in sync? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's any question about it. And look, we know Gronk has a whole lot of fun, but he's deadly serious about his football, as is Tom Brady. Two great competitors, two fantastic players. Over the middle, that's caught by Hogan. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver. And now the Giants will stop play as they take a timeout defensively. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. catch there brings up second down and when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie 
you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. He was looking for Julian Edelman that time, and it's third down. On any passes in the middle of the field, anyone who's going after the football is going to be conscious that it's probably going to be contested, and often physically. Sometimes that leads to drops. Play action. Now it's Brady. And he's got Bennett. And all the way in. Touchdown, New England. Martellus Bennett, 41 yards. And the Patriots get a score closer. Yeah, yeah you heard it, right? <laughs> exhale. The exhale, and I'm taking that from their bench because finally, right before the half, they find a way to get the ball in the end zone and get, get some points on the board. Maybe they can use that to kickstart them for the second half. Yeah, just to get something before going into the lockers. And now in the second half, they can just tighten. That's what they want to do. Tighten down everything they're doing and then maybe explode at the right time. Uh-oh, flag comes out here. This is going to be roughing the kicker. When you're going back there on the kick block, you've got to go to the right point. That didn't happen. Ran into the kicker. The penalty flag had to come out. And oh, it's blocked. The defense has it, but he doesn't get far. They're able to stop him. And after all that, the extra point attempt unsuccessful. I remember when they changed the rule. And there's a lot of consternation, especially coming from the kickers. Okay, how is this going to affect things, having to kick a longer one now? Much more of a field goal attempt. And the defensive guys saw it as an opportunity to get more block. That's exactly right. There's more effort now. Before, when it was stepped down near the goal line, you would basically see guys just stand there. Yeah, not anymore. Now, those guys are going after it because not only can they knock it away and change a little bit of momentum, they can, get two points. They can pick it up and take it back for two points. He's going to go for a big play downfield. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. Well, I guess we just discovered that someone is certainly not going to sit back and just take it in this game, huh? No, they were trying to get that touchdown back in one shot. One shot, trying to help out his defense and let the other team know they were coming after him. They come up in an empty set. Four wide receivers, one tight end. Back to the air on second down. It's Manning. Caught right side. It's Lewis. And he's going to be taken down, but not before reaching the 15-yard line. And now with that completion, he's north of 200 yards here in the first half. And he's going to break our statistician, Marvin, isn't he? Because Marvin right now is just tallying it up. Hope his hand doesn't hurt too much doing this or he keeps hitting the calculator. But my goodness, what a start he is off to. By the end of this game, he could have monster numbers. He just wants to continue to be accurate. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. And with that completion, he's now north of 200 yards here in the first half. Boy, a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to win. All right. Hang on here. We'll jump over halftime. Just let the system and graphics catch up. Okay, all set. Third quarter now. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. Danny Amendola on the return. And he's going to wind up bringing this one inside the 45-yard line. Down screen pass, good for five. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid game. Completed pass play, now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. 
On second down, here's Brady. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Even in today's NFL, when we think of the tight end position now as really a glorified wide receiver, we're still asking a lot of those guys. They have to block as well, and every now and then, they don't come down with the football. Wait 20, wait 20. From the gun on third down, Brady. Quickly to Gronkowski, that's caught. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Ah, yes, Brady to Gronk. You think these two are in sync? Without a doubt, and look, they both understand what they can do for each other. Gronk knows if he gets open, the ball's going to be there. And Tom Brady knows what a great security blanket Gronk is. When all else fails, you find Big 87. And they get 28 yards on that one. And that's good for New England first down. And when you have a guy in the back here who can catch the football, you don't just use him strictly for check downs or dump offs. You make him part of the primary passing attack because what you're trying to do is get him into open field and then let him make people miss and advance the football. On first down, Brady. And incomplete as he was knocked as he threw it. And it took the ball off course. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude, but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure, threw it incomplete. Brady will try again on second down. And this is going to be incomplete. Julian Edelman, the intended receiver, had its third down. Whenever they're trying to attack a zone defense, you're trying to figure out where your gaps are going to be. And depending on what type of zone they're playing, it could be on the outside, it could be in the middle, it could be in the seams, in the edges. In this case, they tried to attack the middle of the field, but this zone defense didn't allow it because they were able to see the ball come off the quarterback's hands and everyone was able to react to the football and knock it away. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. And he's got an open man, it's Gronkowski. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. And now the offense operates in the red zone. On first and 10, here's Brady. This is caught. Gronkowski. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? They'll run it now out of the gun. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there. They're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal. They're going to hurry back to the line now. And he's in. Touchdown, Patriots. Julian Edelman, a five-yard touchdown. And the Patriots are back within a score. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. And he's going to be hit and taken down in the backfield. Just nowhere to run that time. And the try for two is snuffed out. And this is going to be covered up by the Giants. I know they're down, but starting the third quarter there with the onside kick, what'd you think? Well, I think that they're looking at it as we may not have as many possessions in this game as we want. There may be that sense and that feel that they've got to go ahead and make something happen, steal possession, try and steal some points, and get themselves right back in a position to try and win the game. Now a play fake here on first down. Over the middle to Beckham. A gain of six there on first. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Yeah. 
Manning to throw on second down. To Shepard, complete over the middle. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff, didn't Yeah, they? when we talked about him, they did. Yeah, yeah, you know, they like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him as things continue to move on. Trying to get it to Beckham, and it's intercepted. Pick the Red Sea parts, and there he goes. 20, 10. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Patriot defense has a touchdown. And on that one, with six defensive backs, did he need to be more careful throwing the football? I mean, I guess obviously hindsight he did, but. Yeah, hindsight, but even in foresight, when you get six defensive backs on the field, you just know you're going to get multiple coverages. You're never sure what you're going to see. But the biggest one is you don't have much reaction time for your receivers to go get the football because those guys, they're the best cover guys on the field. They go get it. And on that play, they took it the other way for six points. And they don't get it. They tried for the two-point conversion there, but unsuccessful. And in the third quarter here, they were trying to push that to a three-point game, but instead it'll stay at one. And I'm a big proponent of not chasing points or going for two too early. But in this case, I understand why. You know, if you kick an extra point, you're just up two, yeah. right? So a field goal still puts the other team ahead. So you go for two here and protect the field goal lead. They didn't get it done, though. And here comes the Giants offense back out onto the field. And last time, decent field position through the pick six. Obviously costly. But they can't afford to just bunker in now. All right, they, good field position means go ahead and attack on offense. Try and press the advantage a little bit. They just have to be better with the football on this possession. So the last one didn't bother you too much last time? No, because it's, it's exactly what you're supposed to do. You can't have good field position and not try to take advantage of it. Sometimes the defense makes a good play, too. But that's the kickstarter right there. Eli Manning finding his guy, Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah, the, it's a deadly combination, isn't it? It really is, but what really makes it work it's just how unflappable Eli is with his demeanor, able to maintain his calm and his poise. Because we know OBJ, he can run pretty hot and get excited out there. Sometimes just one-handed grabs for him. It doesn't matter what it is. Just throw it up there. He'll go get it. A little lull in the action here to go over an off-season storyline. It's kind of interesting. L.A., a couple years ago, they have no teams, and now they're going to have two with the move from San Diego to L.A. What does that mean for the league and for the Chargers? It seems like an easier transition, doesn't it, than St. Louis when they moved back back to Los Angeles. Less to culture the shock. <laughs> less culture shock, less, you know, obviously geography, the whole deal. But it's a transition that still is not going to be easy. Remember, they're going to go play in a soccer stadium, essentially, mm -hmm. for at least the first couple of years before they share a stadium with the Rams. So that changes things. Obviously, trying to create an identity in the market they haven't been in in a long time. They began as the Los Angeles Chargers, but only played one season as such. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision, and receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. Manning now on first down. And a diving grab. I think he got that. Yes. It's a gain of 20 that time. And it'll be first down Giants. And that's how you throw for a whole heap of yards in a game. You get efforts like that from your receivers. How about him laying out for that catch? Yeah, excellent. Makes a quarterback look a whole lot better. Back now in Foxborough. This one's still anybody's ball game. It's a one-point difference here as we begin the fourth quarter of play. Fresh set of downs here. One receiver left, three to the right. Manning now on first down. And his throw's going to be incomplete. They were trying to get it there to Sterling Shepard. And now it's second down. There are a good number of coaches that any time they call an in route are really worried about the play because there's so much traffic ordinarily that the ball has to get through to get to the receiver. And on that play, it was batted down. And on second and 10 now. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. 
Manning again here on second and ten. That's complete right around the eight. And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Will tie his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the G-Men have taken the lead here in the fourth. Here we go now as we get set for a big two-point conversion. And now we've got a man a little jumpy here, maybe trying to block the extra point. Neutral zone infraction, defense. So the hard count gets them there, neutral zone infraction. Yeah, the defense thought they had the timing down, but the quarterback hit them with a hard count, got them to jump. So let's try this again as they come to the line to go for two. Eli's going to throw, and this one's caught. And their fourth quarter lead grows by a couple more. The penalty got them half the distance to the goal down to the one, made that try a little easier. Yeah, without a doubt, and it opens up your playbook, doesn't it? From the one-yard line, run, pass, do whatever you want there, and they did it successfully. After the touchdown, it's Robbie Gold now to kick it away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. We get a look now at the Giants' defense as they file into position. And a tight ball game here, and in these close ones, every drive becomes magnified. And we don't want to overuse the word critical, but it feels that way as they head out there for this possession. They need to get the ball back and give their offense a chance to get them totally back into this game. We'll see if the defense can do just that here. On the slant, he gets it to Gronkowski. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Three yards to go here on second down. Four down, four down, check. Four down, four down. Wait, wait, wait. Brady to throw on second down. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. LeGarrette Blunt was the intended target. And it's third and short. A lot of teams love to throw screen passes. They want to tire out defenses because they make them run a lot. But there are a lot of moving parts on a play for an offense when they call that one. Because you got the linemen that have to move. You have the wide receivers that have to get out and vacate. You get the running back that's got to make a little fake and then get out into the route. And of course, the quarterback, he's got to hold in there and know he's probably going to take a big hit before he locks the screen off to the back. Why didn't he catch it? That's all he needed to do for them to be successful. And Amendola with a catch. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed, picking up the first. On first down, Brady. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Danny Amendola, that was the intended target, and it's second down. Well, that plays a statistic that's going to go on the defensive team stat sheet. Won't necessarily reflect in hours, right, the overall game sheet, but you and I know that they keep count on pressures, hits on quarterbacks, all those things, hoping to increase that throughout the game. And here we are in the fourth quarter, and they got a big one. Yeah, it's such a close game, a very big one. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end, a guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills, you want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. And right side caught Hogan. And he's brought down. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. And a nice pitch and catch to pick up the reception against man coverage. Both of them read how much yardage they needed, figured what they had to do, and were able to beat the man coverage for the completion. Hey, 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 hey. Wait, 20. Wait, 20. 91. On first and 10, here's Brady. Over the middle, that's caught by Hogan. That throw good for four. It's second down. 
one of the feature points of the in route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Again, it's Brady. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield. Complete. And all the way in. Touchdown, New England. Deion Lewis, 33 yards. And the Patriots are within an extra point of tying this one up. Getting your back involved, what's the importance there in the passing game? Well, oftentimes you can create mismatches because who's going to cover him? And you get him into space, which is where he likes to operate with the ball in his hands. It oftentimes makes people miss, gets that run after the catch, and off he goes. And into the end zone. Personal foul, roughing a kicker, defense. Uh-oh, flag comes out here. This is going to be roughing the kicker. When you're going back there on the kick block, you've got to go to the right point. That didn't happen. Ran into the kicker. The penalty flag had to come out. And, oh, he missed it. No good. And they'll remain down by a point. So here we go. Still down one score, and here comes the onside kick. Yeah, this is going to be covered up by the Giants. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number, kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Well, we haven't been shortchanged on offense. Another fun play to watch there on the deep pass. This game has the feel of, what, a, a turkey bowl, a Thanksgiving day. You know, when we get together this year, when the Davises and the Gardens get together, that's what our playbook's going to look like, like they're drawing them up in the dirt. And so far, it's working for both of them. Caught left side, it's Beckham. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Eli to OBJ. What a combo. And really, how do you defend them when they're on their game? Absolutely, and they're on their game in this one. That, that's really what this offense is predicated on, isn't it? It really is. It's explosive plays. And it doesn't matter whether Eli throws it three yards or 30 yards. OBJ can provide that. So it's Giants football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Throwing on first down is Manning. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Carter, why were they even putting the ball in the air in that situation? I know they have confidence a lot of the time in their team. And, hey, we can call anything. But in this spot, with that lead and that amount of time on the clock, not much, you've got to take care of it. I would have figured they'd run the football there. Now their defense has to stand tall. 26 yards on the pickup there. And it gives the Pats a first down.
They slot Gronkowski out right. He'll look to throw. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. A great read and it's picked off. And they take possession two yards away from midfield at the 48-yard line. Partner's bad enough when you just can't hold on to the football. But when your quarterback's throwing it to the other team, that's three interceptions now, four turnovers for the game. You really have no chance to win the football game. Here's the giant offense now making their way back out onto the field. This remains a one-point game. The defense did their job. Now the offense here late. They just need to kind of hold on, seal this victory. And the defense did it so far. Oh, no, he lost the football. And it's picked up by the Patriots. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. We have seen this before. And we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. They're only in need of a field goal. A decent amount of time on the clock. So... Tell me if I'm wrong. You don't have to be too panicked here. No, not at all. I agree with you. And this is where your preparation and your confidence comes into play. They've worked on these situations. Yeah, they practice this all the time. Oh, they practice it all the time. They know what they want to get done. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. He's back to throw. Looking middle, it's caught by Gronkowski. A gain of six there on first. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. They slot Gronkowski out right. Back to throw. Dumps it off to Lewis. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. That's what they need right now. Get the first down, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Just playing smart football, understanding the situation, making the plays necessary, and making sure that clock stops at every opportunity. They'll look to throw. And open here is Hogan. He's got it. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Hogan, offense. So oftentimes you see defensive holding. Here it's offensive holding for the flag. Hogan, the intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. But there was no trace of nervousness there. He was able to diagnose that play from his linebacker position, stay in excellent coverage, and bat the ball away. Second down following the incompletion. Blunt, the load running back. Here's Brady to throw, and he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. They push him back eight yards that time on second down. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. And the defense will try and pin their ears back and get pressure again here after the sack. It's third down. Easy. Back to throw, Brady. Wide open, Gronkowski. It'll be a gain of 17, but even with that, they'll be well short here for fourth down. And with it, now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. 
A big spot now for Steven Goskowski. This to take the lead here in the final minute. And that is no good. Wide to the right. But there is a flag down. He might get another shot at this. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. Defense. And this is going to be roughing the kicker, an inexcusable penalty, Charles. You've worked so hard to hold him to a three-point kick. Now you give him the ball again with a chance for a touchdown. In the red zone this time. He'll look to throw. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked up by Janoris Jenkins. Well, I don't think we'll have to look very hard. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. And tough starting field position here. Manning looking to throw it. He's going to air one out. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by Deron Harmon. And he's able to get it back to the 33-yard line. A critical air there in a tight game of the fourth. All you talk about is taking care of the football, and especially with a lead here in the fourth quarter. Turning it over, now the door is open for the opposition. Just in general, when you're passing in the fourth quarter with a lead, no matter at what point, you gotta be super careful. Gotta be careful, and sometimes you can be so careful that you end up running yourself into an error. My high school coach, John Ford, used to say all the time, if you're in a bad situation, laddie, don't compound it with a bad decision as well. And I think that's what we just saw there. Harassed in the pocket, and he throws into double coverage anyway. He called you laddie? He called me laddie, and that was the nicest thing he called me. And his kick is absolutely perfect. And they have regained the lead. Well, I know it points to this when you wanted to close your eyes because of all the points that were being put on the scoreboard, you're a defensive guy, but it was a fun little track meet, wasn't it? It was, and you know the people who really enjoyed this game? They're the ones that like going to batting practice at the Major League Baseball <laughs> parks, right? Seeing the 14-11 to 11 game, that sort of deal, that's right up their alley with what we saw in this one.